have you been looking for? Butterick 6015, the walkaway dress issued in 1952 only to find it either A, completely sold out, or B, priced at an insanely high prices. Well, friends, never fear. I'm here to help you with a couple other options. But I want to preface this first. These are still vintage patterns, so they are still going to be harder to find, but not nearly as impossible as this thing. And stay tuned, there might be a little um <clears throat> thing coming up with this pattern. So stay to the end to find out. And before we get started, let's be very clear, I am not actually talking about this atrocity, which I have already shown my full feelings of in a video on this channel, which I will absolutely link below and give you a little sneak peek of it right here. But anyway, Ooh. no, I would never do that to a real vintage pattern, but that thing doesn't count. No, what we are going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at Butterick 6015, the original, the one, the only, the walkaway dress, and comparing it to some other friends that Butterick decided to make later on in the years. First up is going to be Butterick 6836. I almost personally like this one better. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this one and Butter 5368, which was also issued in 1969, trying to capture in on that crowd of people that I guess wanted to learn how to sew and do it easy and have a quick and easy dress. I don't know, maybe. Where do we go from here? I don't know. So let's go ahead and get started comparing the original walkaway dress to these other two over to the craft table. And as of course I have managed to lose my cell phone holder, this is the best we're going to be able to do with me splicing in a little bit of my face here in just a little second. But what we're looking at is number one, 6015. The original is right here. Gee, look at that. 6836 is very differently shaped. And 5368, not too very, not too different, but just different enough from the original. Now, the biggest difference that we can see in these is going to be the darting, especially of the original 6015 to any of the others. The original darting has that weird seven shape and an additional long dart, whereas Neither of the others makes this weird dart. Would it be easy to relatively make it? Sure. Have I tried? No. So this is all conjecture at this point. You think I would have put the tripod at a height where I could stand up normally, but you would be wrong. The most interesting thing that I find is that 6836 really is just this bodice piece. That is the entire front, not these longer skirt pieces like in the other two models. Also in 6836, you also have these two extra facing and collar pieces, which the other two couldn't be bothered with because they just do bias tape around it and call it done. Last thing to note, as far as length goes, well, 6836 really doesn't have a play in this, but, but if you line the shoulder pieces up of the original and the 1969 version, 5368 is much, much shorter. Let's move on to the back pieces. Now, the very first thing that jumps out to me is going to be, look at the difference of the back lengths of all of these. The very first one, the original 6015 is very short. The angle is very shallow and the this fat flap is not that long. However, once you get to 54's version, which is Butterick 6836, look at how much longer this is. This is the fold line, so the button would go here. So this is just facing. But even still, if you cut off to there, that is still quite a bit different. And then by the time you get to 69, hold the phone, Batman, we're almost off the edge of the screen here because that is so much longer than literally everything else. But the, bat the difference really sticks out when you lay them all on top of one another. You have the original on top, followed by 6836, followed by our friend here from the 1960s down below, 5368. The angles sort of stay the same for 6836, but the angle of 69s has gotten way wider and it is also by far the longest. Whereas 6015 is by far the shallowest, but also has the deepest back cut, which I find very intriguing. But I know you didn't just come here for the fronts and the backs. I know what you're really here for is, that's right, that skirt, that swoosh factor, friends. So let's go ahead and pull at that thread now, shall we? Now, one thing I do want to mention before we get into the nitty gritty of the back pieces here are a couple things. Number one, I am very well aware that these are different size patterns. I've got two bus 34s and uh, three different waist sizes, if I remember correctly. So I am very clear that I am not lining up apples to apples, oranges to oranges. I'm just getting a feel for if they feel correct together. Number two, I want you to remember that these silhouettes between the late 60s and the mid 50s the fullness of the skirt and everything about the silhouette has drastically changed. So before we go ripping into this pattern, because it's a, <clears throat> a little different, please just remember that. Also, did I still manage to not put the camera so I couldn't stand up? Absolutely, I did not. Here we are. 
So on top here, we have, that's right, our friend from 1969, 5368. <laughs> you can clearly see how much shorter it is than everything freaking else. But again, 1969 versus 1954 and 1952. Very different silhouettes. Now, it is very short, but it does keep to the, to the idea of what this skirt is, right? Although it does have this weird little interesting jut out here, which I'm not really sure what that would do, but I'm sure they had a reason. Believe it or not, the next one down is 6015, which is our original bad boy, which was in a bust 32, which means the waist is going to be a 26 and a half for this pattern. Whereas this one on the very bottom is going to be 6836, which is actually a bust 34, which is going to be a waist 28 at the time. So the difference between these two actually makes sense because what you're looking at here is the fold line because 6836, the bottom one, is a much more structured pattern. It has more details. It's going to hold its form better. So which one do I think that you should get instead of the illustrious 6015? 6836. If you can find it, I personally think that the stu structure is much better, the style is much better, and it gives you the form so that it stays a little bit better. Now, does the fact that the front stops literally underneath this skirt make me just the tiniest bit nervous? Yes. Would I advise adding snaps or something to that crossover skirt? Absolutely, I would, so you don't have a giant wardrobe malfunction. But if what you're going for is the original lines without the very hefty price tag. Honestly, Butter at 5368. Now don't come at me before you get all mad. If you remember, that back was pretty daggone close with the way it was structured and so was the front. All you have to do on the back is scoop it out a little bit more and you just have to connect those darts into that weird seven that the Butter at 6015 does. And what do you have to do to make the skirt work? Use a circle skirt pattern instead of the bottom pattern they give you. Bob's your uncle, there you go. Now, are you going to probably have the pulling forward in the other situation that 6015 has? Yeah, 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 you probably are. But hey, if you want an original line without the super hefty price tag, I would advise looking for this one, Butterick 5368 instead. Now you can go for the one that's at Joann's when you pick it up for $1.99 because dear God, don't pay full price for that thing. But also just remember my thoughts on that one. Anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, one, God bless you, and two, remember that time I talked about a little thing I'm gonna do? I have decided in my infinite wisdom and exponential amounts of time, they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, that I'm going to be running a little bit of a challenge. Butterick 6015 boasts that you can start it after breakfast and walk away in it for a luncheon. I'm gonna put that to the test. Now here's what I'm gonna be doing. Over the month of September, if you too would like to try your hand at the walkaway dress, I am going to be emailing a digital pattern that I do advise you take to Staples. Now, before you get off on me, number one, I traced it. So it's it's got whatever I traced into it too, so please be nice. And two, it's just a tracing. They've already reissued it. I didn't go off of the reissue. And also you can't copyright the patterns inside the envelope packet. What I am going to be doing is going to be giving some away. So I am going to be giving these away to you. The only thing that I ask in return is that you make this thing with me. We're gonna do a time challenge. We are going to send this out far and wide and see how fast someone can actually make this pattern. I'm talking from start to finish. That means you're cutting it out, sewing it, and wearing it all in the same day. Let's see who can do it the fastest. Now I will say that the only prize in this is that you are going to be crowned the Butterick Walkaway Challenge champion. I'm the king of the world! I will absolutely post your channel or Instagram or whatever you choose, but I do request that it goes somewhere on social media and that you do link my channel so that way everyone knows where the challenge is coming from. And I will be watching every video that tags me on YouTube and Instagram to announce the winning time on November 15th, 2022 right here on my community tab. So if you feel up to the challenge, email me and I will send you a digital copy of this. Now I do say that you should take this to a printer like Staples because I have not tiled it. I just scanned the big massive thing and I will email you the big massive thing. Good speed, God luck. That's not how that saying goes, but we're gonna go with it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you're clicking that like button before you leave. Leave me a comment if you think you're gonna be able to participate in this challenge and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. I can't reach the camera, so. Ugh. Wrong button.
Is that the right button? That was the right button. Okay, great. Also in, ooh, Shiza, don't do that. But if what you're going for is the actual original lines, why is my camera crooked? That's gonna suck. Okay, I'll fix that later. Now the only prize in this is that you get to be uh, crowned the judge. <laughs> now I will say that the only prize in this is that you will get to be crowned the Butterick Rapaway. Stop the recording. <laughs>